time to begin in where's the mark? Genesis 2, verse 19. Genesis 2, 19. Blow harder, Mary. I know you can. Oh. I'll do it. We'll come across the room again. <laughs> yeah. I'll still have a look for it. <laughs> Genesis 2.19. Um, if you leave me alone, give me a break today. Uh, well, that's hard, but I'll... I'll I've been sick. Take a penny on that. I'll, <laughs> I'll put, like he would, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. just make it worse. I'll tell you what. I'll put forth my best effort. <laughs> the best effort that I can with you. Genesis 2.19 says, Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Mm-hmm. So Adam named all the animals, and I, you know, uh, Linda has said, "I wonder where he came up with all the names." You know, and uh, you know, I, I never really gave it a whole lot of thought, but uh, of course, God uh, told Adam to name the animals, and I, I imagine. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine God telling someone to do something and then not helping them do it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like our salvation. Uh, you know, God has commanded, of course, the things that need to be done for our initial salvation of coming into Christ and, of course, uh, remaining in Christ and, and not falling away and not not uh, turning away from the Lord, as Brother Arthur was uh, admonishing us today. But, uh, you know, God, Dad always used to say, God will not command you to do something that you cannot do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And God will provide a way. Amen. He will provide the sacrifice, right? That's right. He, uh, mm-hmm. you know, people have told me. In fact, the last time this was brought up to me, uh, it, it kind of surprised me uh, from the person that it was coming from. Although I, I knew that this person did not believe you had to be baptized to be saved. Uh, but of course, you know, there's there's the standard equipment. Uh, from the denominational world to try to battle against the necessity of baptism. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, well, he said, uh, what if you were on the desert (coughs) and there wasn't any water around? You know, what what would that, uh, how would that work out? You know, you, you can't be baptized in the desert. And of course, you know, when people prior to that had said that to me, I said, well, there are oases in the desert. Yeah. You know, there there is water in the desert. It might be kind of hard to find, but, uh, you know, the Lord has provided that. But with this man, I said this. I said, you know what? I said, what you have created is a hypothetical situation. Mm-hmm. I said, we know no one who is in that situation. And I said, the best I can do for you is to give you a hypothetical answer to a hypothetical question, and neither one of us would benefit from it. Amen. 
So I, you know, just dropped it. And he said, well, you're right. So I just dropped it and moved on. So anyway, um, back to uh, uh, Adam naming the animals. You know, I've heard people say about the animals, some of the animals God created that he had a sense of humor. Uh, <clears throat> and I think some of the names that Adam gave to the animals, he might have had a sense of humor too. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, Adam named all the animals, and he also named his wife Eve no. uh, in chapter 3, verse 20. Chapter 3, verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. So not only did Adam named all the animals, but he also named his wife. God did not bring Eve to Adam and say, here she is. Now, uh, here's what her name is. He let Adam name Eve. But no man, no man has ever, nor can any man ever name God. The name of God is divine. The name of God, uh, or I should say the names of God, because there are different names uh, that have been ascribed to God in the Old Testament scriptures, and even some in the New Testament scriptures, uh, because of some of his attributes, because of some of his character, because of uh, his nature. And these names have been given to God by God. Mm -hmm. He has named himself mankind cannot name God. Mm-hmm. Many years ago, I was, uh, I was talking to a man, and, you know, he, he, he tried to give me a, a pretty rough time. Um, I said, do you believe that the Bible is the Word of God? The infallible Word of God? And he said... Yes, insofar as it is correctly translated. Hmm. Now that answer comes right from the Masons. And uh, it, it also comes right from the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, so I knew right then who he had been talking to. I, I knew or kind of thought maybe he also was a member of the Masonic Lodge. The Bible is the Word of God insofar as it is correctly translated. So I said, uh, okay, so in other words, you know, when you go through the Bible, uh, you pick this up and you say, well, you know, that obviously is the Word of God because that was correctly translated, but this over here is not the Word of God because there's an error in the translation. And he said, right. I said, do you know Hebrew? And he said, no. I said, do you know Aramaic? And he said, no. I said, do you know Greek? And he said, no. And I said, well, those are the three languages that the Bible was originally written in. How do you know what of it has been correctly translated and what of it has not if you don't know the languages? <laughs> he said, well, 
He said, you got me on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but he also told me, he said, no matter what you call God, he's still God. He said, whether you call him Buddha or Allah or, you know, uh, Buddha, Allah. I, I think those were the only two he mentioned. Uh, whether you call him Buddha or Allah, he's still the same God. Yeah. No. And I'm thinking, what kind of cockeyed reasoning is that for the name of God? What he was saying in essence is, God is whatever name you want to call him. We are not at liberty to name God. He named himself. He didn't create us so we could give him a name. Amen. He, he, he wasn't uh, roaming around through eternity uh, before the creation without a name and without any kind of description of his character or his attributes saying, oh, I need someone to give me a name so I think <laughs> I'll create man on the earth and then maybe he can give me a name because I can't come up with one. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> See how silly that is? Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. The Masonic Lodge calls God the nameless one of a thousand names. What kind of ridiculous statement is that? The nameless one of a thousand names. And the Masonic Temple has come up with a name for God. I'm afraid to hear. I know. Well, they say the name of God is uh, uh, let's see <coughs> mm. there are three names I can't think of the second one anyway the last part of the name is uh, and I, I'm sorry I can't that's, think of that okay. second name but anyway um, this is the name of the Egyptian sun god sun well, god this is an alternate spelling and pronunciation of Baal. What? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sorry I'm at a loss on this, on this middle part. I thought I knew it. And I probably do. I just can't think of it. You might figure it out after lunch. Yeah, <laughs> probably, when it's too late. That's right. Yeah. All right. So that's what they've done. They've taken parts of the names of three false gods, mm -mm -mm. put them together, and said, this is the name of God. Mm -hmm. That falls with almost the same thing when they named Zeus. Yeah. God's supposed to be a god. Yeah. I'm like, wow. So this is... This is what the uh, the Masons are up to. And that's just on the name of God. And people tell me, 
that it's okay to belong to the Masons. They, they're not a religious organization. They are a cult. Yes. They have worship ceremonies. They call one man in their organization the uh, worshipful master. Oh. Yeah, that's the one with the L. Worshipful master. And, you know, that's after you've climbed the ladder of, of uh, Masonism or whatever you'd call it. And you've gone through, you know, 33 degrees of, of uh, being called different things until finally, buddy, you hit the jackpot. And you are the most worshipful master. It's a cult. It's not a club. No. It's a cult. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about the Masons. Right. <laughs> but this kind of nonsense is what's going on in the world. Amen. And, uh, you know, my, my mother was, and when I say was, I don't mean up until she died. I mean... Uh, up until she knew better, she was a member of the Eastern Star, which is the female side of the Masonic Lodge. Her dad, my grandfather, was a Mason. Her brother, my uncle, is a Mason. Mm -hmm. Don't go to church. Oh, no. They're satisfied to say, the Masons are enough church for me. Never heard of the Masons? Oh, yeah, they have their own little and on. No. No, that's the Gideons. I thought the Masons did too. Huh? I thought the Masons did too. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Yeah, they have their own. I don't call them the Freemasons. Freemasons, yeah. Uh, and it all started kind of, I guess, innocently enough. It was a, a type of a union of uh, brick masons, stone masons. Yeah. And that's why it's called the Masons. But they're the ones, if you're, if you're riding down the road and you see an emblem similar to this, Let's see, that would come on down, and this would come up. Uh, and under here, there is a ruler. Of course, what this is, what the, bar, what the uh, triangle is, uh, as a compass, mm -hmm. you know, like, not like that has north, south, east, and west, but the kind of compass that you put a pen or a pencil in and draw mm -hmm. circles. Yeah. And there's a big G. In that triangle, the G stands for grand... Masons. That's when we see it. And they all wear an emblem on their on their vehicles. Mm -hmm. So if you ever if you're in the car and you're behind a car that has this on it, those people are members of the Masonic Temple. Well so anyway, yeah, that's kind of the way that goes. And uh, you know we have men in congregations of the Lord's Church who are called elders who are members of the Masonic Temple. And they also wear a ring with this emblem on that I just drew up there. It's, it's like a class ring, uh, but it's specifically for the Masons. And 
uh, the reason they wear these rings and the reason they have those stickers or whatever it is, I, I guess they're metal, so they're more than stickers, uh, is because if, for example, I was a Mason, you gals were members of the Eastern Star, the Order of the Eastern Star, O-E-S, is their symbol. Uh, if you have car trouble, as an example, and you're towed to a garage run by a man who is a mason, all you have to do is show him your ring and you get everything for free. Wow. Yep. Whatever you need, if you flash that ring or the symbols that are on your vehicle, you got it made. Anyway, so, so that's so, enough about, that's <laughs> about the Masons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But man is not at liberty to call God just anything that pops into his mind, anything that we want to call God, you know, it's okay, he's still God. No. No, because if you call him Allah, you are praying to a false god. Amen. Right. If Amen. you call him Buddha. Uh, Buddha, you're praying to a false god. If you call him Baal, you're praying to a false god. If yes. you call him what the, what the Masons call him, you're praying to three false gods. Yeah. No. God is not called just by anything that a whim pops into our mind and we think, oh, I think I'll call God this today. <laughs> no. Save your breath, right? Mm -hmm. Is if you call him that, he's not going to recognize mm -hmm. your prayer or you. Amen. Or me. All right. Hopefully I'm not stupid enough to do that. Um, okay, so let's go over to Joshua 23. <clears throat> and verse 7, if you would please. Joshua. Hmm. I'm in Judges. Okay, Mary, do, see how you're affecting me? I do that all the time. <laughs> Let me write this up here. Okay. Joshua 23.7 <laughs> Got it, Mary. Yep. Okay. Huh? <coughs> good. Well, he's a good guy to help. I'm glad to have rubbed off on too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, if, if you start at the beginning, you know, at some point you're going to be close to it. <laughs> anyway, Joshua 23, 7, And lest you go among these nations, these who remain among you, you shall not make mention of the name of their gods. Mm -hmm. So if we call God by these silly uh, uh, man-made names, we are making mention of the name of their gods, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Nor cause anyone to swear by them. You shall not serve them nor bow down to them, mm -hmm. but you shall hold fast to Jehovah your God as you have done this Amen. day. Mm-hmm. 
Now the Lord is protective of his name. Remember a couple of weeks ago, well, a few weeks ago, we talked about taking the name of the Lord in vain. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, the Lord says, I will not hold him guiltless who takes my name in vain. Mm -hmm. When we become Christians, we take his name. So the Bible, you know, doesn't necessarily uh, specifically say that to take the name of the Lord in vain is to use it as a cuss word. But I, I don't want to do that anyway. You know, I mean, exactly. Uh, we we can see some examples in the Bible of people who did that, and and you know what the what the price was. Uh, for what they had done. So we're going back to Exodus chapter 23 right now. Exodus 23, verse 20. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 23, um, verse 20. Okay. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him. And obey his voice. Mm -hmm. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions. Now, this has to be Jesus before he became Jesus. Because an angel cannot uh, forgive sin, Amen. cannot Amen. forgive transgression. So the Lord says, beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. For my name is in him. So, doesn't matter what we call him? Yes. It matters. It does matter what we call him. Amen. So then... If we take the proposition that it does not matter what we call him, mm. then how are we going to recognize his angel, his messenger, Jesus Christ, yes. as being sent from God mm -hmm. because God has put his name in him. Amen. We can't call him by anything we want to. You know, people can't walk up to Jesus and say, oh, well, you know what? This is Baal. This is, this is uh, uh, Buddha. This is uh, Zoroaster. Or, you know, it's some of those other false gods. His name is in his angel or messenger. Jesus Christ. Amen. How would we recognize him if not by the name that God ascribed to himself <coughs> and to his messenger? <coughs> How would we recognize him? How would we know it's him? If he walked up to you and said, uh, you know what? I'm, uh, I can't think of that name that the Masons use. But anyway, uh, you know what? I'm Allah. Mm -mm. Then he's not God's messenger. No. These names are appointed by God, not by any man. God named himself. 
He put his name in Jesus Christ. Yep. We were talking about, uh, you know, seeing God. Jesus told the apostles, if you've seen me, you have seen, seen the, Father. the Father. Amen. So people saw God when they saw Jesus, but they saw him in a human body. Mm -hmm. They saw a physical manifestation of God. And <coughs> God put his name in his messenger, the messenger of the covenant. Amen. So let's go back to Exodus 3. We're, we're kind of playing tennis here today, aren't we? Exodus 3. Uh, verse 13. I know this passage is familiar to you. You're not going to be reading scripture that you've never read before. But just to point out a couple of things here. Exodus 3, verse 13 and 14. Exodus 3, 13 and 14. Then Moses said to God, <clears throat> this is on the burning bush, uh, the Mount Sinai, uh, in front of the burning bush. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Mm -hmm. Now the answer is not any of these way out humanly contrived concoctions of names yes. that... Uh, they say, well, it doesn't matter what you call God. He's God no matter what you call him. Oh, brother. Mm. It's interesting God didn't say, well, just tell him any name you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just what, it doesn't matter what you call me. I'm still God. Right? God did not say that. <clears throat> and God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. I am. That's the name of God. But notice... In the last part of verse 15. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. So how long is this the name of God? Forever. Forever. It's never going to change. Not going to expire. Right. <laughs> And his memorial to all generations. So God was looking from, at that time, all the way up to the return of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And my memorial to all generations. Mm -hmm. I am. I am that I am. It's a repetition of the verb to be. And it means the one who was, the one who is, and the one who always will be. And Jesus said to John in the apocalypse, in the revelation, I am the first and I am the last. I am he who was and who is. And who is to come. Amen. Jesus never shrunk from calling himself that. Amen. He said it. 
He said it in more than one place. I was talking to a man, young man, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. I noticed his name was Solomon as he was working for the place that I went into. His name is Solomon, and I said, wow, I said, uh, you know what, that's a good Bible name. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't really react to that. I said, do you know who Solomon is? He just went. I said, he was the king of Israel. There was not a wiser king than him before him. Nor will there be after him until the world ends. And he was, I don't know, I didn't say filthy rich, but he was. <laughs> and uh, I said, you know, uh, he is the greatest king that has ever lived. He shrugged his shoulders. So far he hasn't said anything to me. Shrugged his shoulders. I said, do you believe that? He, eh. And I said, well, you know what? I said, the Bible says it, and that makes it true. Another shrug of the shoulders. I said, not only does the Bible say it, but Jesus said it, and if Jesus said it, it's got to be true. He didn't shrug his shoulders that time. I said, buddy, with a name like Solomon, you don't know what your life holds for you. <laughs> but anyway, I, I went on then. Um, it's, it's a tragedy how people are spiritually starved. They're not being taught anything from the Word of God, not being taught things about God <clears throat> at alarming rates, more so than at any other time that I can remember. And I, I don't know uh, if Larry can remember any time or not. I'm not nearly as old as Larry, so I, you know, I don't go back that far. <laughs> Mary's laughing. She's glad I'm picking on someone else. <laughs> Gave her a break. <laughs> so let's hop over to John chapter 8, verse 58. You know, I'm, <clears throat> my voice is kind of raspy today, and I'll tell you why. Because Linda loves the way I cook steaks. I don't see anything so great about it. She she loves the way I cook steaks. Well, uh, we uh, <clears throat> stopped and got a couple of steaks the other day. It was when we spent that whole day in Winchester, you know, we waited Thursday. Thursday, okay, thank you. I was to have my EEG at 8.30. Then Linda had a doctor's appointment at 1, mm -hmm. and she had a therapy appointment at 2. Mm -hmm. So we... Uh, got there for my EEG and the woman says, oh, that was for yesterday. And you know what? I specifically <laughs> say it, Arthur. Thank you, Arthur. You know what? I always thought you kind of looked like Arthur. I'm a, I'm a ventriloquist. That's, that's my dummy. Word. They got the same bill. Bill. 
I'm a ventriloquist. Me That's my puppet. <laughs> mm-hmm. the, the girl and the lady I was talking to was not the one I talked to over the phone. Right. She was just filling in for the woman who does that job. Uh, but anyway, I distinctly remember telling that lady, because she originally made the appointment for Wednesday at 8.30, but I specifically remember asking her if she could make the appointment for Thursday, because I said, we have other appointments in Winchester, and we live in Martinsburg, it would save us a trip. And she said, oh yeah. I guess she never entered it in the system. (laughs) So we left. We went to McDonald's parking lot and we sat there for five hours. It was one one o'clock appointment. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So now I have to go back to Winchester which I didn't want to do. I wanted to go when we were going up there anyway Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for that stupid EEG. And they're going to find out that there's nothing up there anyway. (laughs) They said... (laughs) 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 In the belfry. (laughs) The the day... The day that... uh, I had my my uh, problem. Uh, <coughs> went to the ER, and after they did the CAT scan, mm-hmm. nurse came in and she said, "Well, your CAT, your CAT scan was clear. There's nothing there." <laughs> and I said, "I could have told you that." What is Kim No. Linda could have been a witness for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so John eight fifty eight. Are we all there? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, now I'm going to pull an Arthur on you. <laughs> Good on you, mate. And go back to fifty six. Good job. Just to get a running start here, so we know yes. what's going on. Uh, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. Mm-hmm. He says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? (laughs) Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. 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 I am. I am. Took the name right <coughs> off of Mount Sinai and applied it to himself. That's right. And every right. Yeah. Then they took up stones to throw at him. Hmm. You know, when, when, when people get mad when you say things, and, you know, they start to uh, make threats and they start to go ballistic. It's because they don't know how to answer what you've said. Right. And that's what the Pharisees were doing. They didn't know how to answer this. They didn't know what to say. Jesus clamped the lid tight on their mouths. So they said, you know what? We we can't hurt him with words. We'll just pick up stones and throw them at him. Hmm. Now, we're going to go back, if you would please, to Isaiah 62, Mm -hmm. verse 2. Isaiah 62, 2. Okay. 
Isaiah 62, verse 2. We'll wait till the seniorest of seniors <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Isaiah 62, verse 2. Mm-hmm. Here's what it says. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness, and all the kings your glory. Mm-hmm. Now here we go. You shall be called by a new name, yes. which the mouth of the Lord well named. Amen. Sang like that song, there's a new name written down in glory. Mm-hmm. Well, that wasn't the name that the Lord had placed upon uh, the person that's talking about. That, uh, that song means that my name, Mark McDonald, is written down in heaven. So it's not talking about this new name, but... Uh, you know, that's one reason I wanted to sing that song. But notice, you shall be called by a new name which the mouth of Jehovah the Lord will name. Amen. <coughs> so you see, we're not at liberty to call ourselves <coughs> Baptists or Methodists or Episcopalians or Lutherans or Catholics or any of these other superfluous names that have been added by Satan in the religious world. Only the name which the mouth of the Lord named. And we can find that name in Acts. Chapter 11. Verse 25. Acts 11. And <clears throat> verse 25. Now we're, we're winding down here. Acts 11. 25 and 26. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. Oh, I'm sorry, 25. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. So Barnabas wanted to find the man that we know as Paul. Mm -hmm. Uh, So he, uh, you know, set sail to seek for Saul. 26 says, And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people, and the disciples were called Christians, were first called Christians in Antioch. So this was the first time that the mouth of the Lord named the new name. Amen. And the new name is Christian. Christian. That's the only name whereby we can be saved. Amen. God's looking for Christians. He's not looking for Baptists and Episcopalians and, and Presbyterians and Methodists and uh, whatever and whoever uh, might pop up (laughs) is looking for Christians because he called us Christians. And by the way, this word, the Greek word, uh, where it says the disciples were first called Christians, the word called is not kaleo. Kaleo is like you would open the door and, you know, call... 
Colette. your kids in mm -hmm. to the house. Uh, Kaleo is just anybody, anywhere, calling someone else. The Greek word that's used here for call means to call by divine appointment. Wow. So we have been divinely appointed mm. Christians and nothing else. There aren't any, you know, that's, I'm thinking of a church that's called uh, the Apostolic Church. Mm -hmm. And there are some around here. Uh, there are, uh, well, there's one in the town Vicky lives in, in Ohio, but uh, the thing of it is, there's no such thing as an apostolic church. The church is a Jesusistic church. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it wears his name. Amen. Not the names of the apostles. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There's no such thing as a Pentecostal church. Pentecost was a feast of the Jews. Jesus nailed that to the cross when he died on the cross. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a Pentecostal church. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're right. The church is named after Jesus, not after a feast of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Why would... Why would God's church elevate the Jews and, and, and call their religion after a Jewish feast day that was only for, for Jews? It wasn't for Christians. Amen. You're right. Well, no, no such thing as these bogus churches. By divine appointment, God said, my people are Christians. Yes. That's it. He didn't say they're Methodist Christians, they're right. Baptist Christians. No such yeah. thing. And yet, if, if you ask these people uh, something about their religious affiliation, they'll say, oh, well, I'm a Baptist. And I say, oh, well... I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, well, I'm a Christian too. No. I just go to the Baptist church. Doesn't matter what you call the church mm -hmm. as oh, long as we're worshiping God. Mm -hmm. Haven't you heard that? Oh, yeah. It matters. Doesn't matter what you... Listen, <coughs> Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Mm-hmm. Acts 20, verse 28 says he paid the purchase price for the church with his own blood. Yes. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, Paul said that uh, we are betrothed to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when a woman marries a man, she takes the man's name. Now, that's not just Traditional, that's not just custom. It's not just, uh, uh, what, what do they call it when, uh, you know, when, when kids in school study what other religions or other countries do. Yeah. Uh, they call it... Uh, cultural? Yeah, cultural. It's not cultural. No. The name of the church... Is scriptural. Yes. Amen. Amen. And there's not a Baptist church or any other kind of church in here. Like John Van Voorst said, he said, there's only one Baptist in the Bible and he was going out of business. He didn't start a church. No. He knew better. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me let me look here. Let's think of 2 Corinthians 11. Oh, well, wait a minute. 
I think I'm wrong because I'm thinking it's 11.3, but I think 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, but I fear lest by any means. Yeah, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Let me get Jimmy Connors here. <laughs> uh, Well, it's right there. I thought it was 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2, not verse 3. <laughs> I started to say it was verse 3, but it is, and it's verse 2. It says, uh, For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy, for I have betrothed or espoused or married you to one husband, mm -hmm. that I may present you as a chaste virgin, to Christ. Amen. Second Corinthians eleven two. Don't see it. Verse two. Ah, no, 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 sorry. Okay. All right now. Uh, hastening on, we'll take a look at Revelation 17. We're going to end in Revelation here. Of course, you know, Revelation is quite a big book. So we could be here another three, yeah, at least. We've been talking about it. <laughs> depending, depending on which verse we're looking at, <laughs> we could be here <laughs> for seven or eight years. Yeah. Hope you packed a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Revelation uh, 17 8. 17 8. Revelation 17 8. Now here's the thing, what I'm hoping to express in the message today is that if you apply a certain logic and ask enough questions, you will go further and further and further and further and deeper into the thing. Mm -hmm. If it's a lie, it's going to fail. Yep. It's going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. If it's the truth, you can apply any logic that you want to to it, and it will never crumble. It will never fail because the foundation is solid because Jesus Christ is the foundation. Didn't Paul say that in 1 Corinthians 3? Mm -hmm. Yes. For other foundation can no man lay yes. than that which is laid. Mm -hmm. who is Jesus Christ. Well, the, uh, you know, John Calvin tried to lay a different foundation and he formed the uh, Presbyterian Church and, and uh, Martin Luther laid a foundation and it became the Methodist Church and, and John Knox laid a foundation and it became the Church of England and, mm -hmm. and on and on and on, but none of them became the Lord's Church Amen. because it was men who laid the foundation. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
Where did I say we are? Revelation 17. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. Mm -hmm. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written mm -hmm. in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. So the song we sang, there's a new name written down in glory. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's acceptable and if it's true, that we can just call God anything we want to because he's still God no matter what you call him. No, no. Or you can call the church anything. No, no. We, we're, the, we're all... Christians and we're all part of the church, we just go by a different name. No. How silly is that? You know what? If if someone does not <coughs> bear your family name or somewhere in their ancestry has not ever been a mention of your family name. They're not related to you. And if we go by names other than the name of Jesus, other than the names that God has said, this is my name forever, then they're not related to God. Amen. Mm-hmm. So, if names are insignificant, then it doesn't matter what name God writes in the book of life, right? Oh, it does. I mean, we're the same people, doesn't matter what we're called. Oh, it matters, it matters. See? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be there. <laughs> and when old Arthur goes up before the judgment seat, and the Lord looks at the book of life and he says, I don't see Arthur de Stefano in here. I would say take another look, <laughs> please. No, because it doesn't matter what you're called. Oh, it does. Because you're the same person no matter what you're called. Mm -hmm. So when you stand before the Lord, it doesn't matter what name he wrote down in the book, right? Yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. Yeah, it does. It I want to be there. You, Miss Daisy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to be there. There ain't but one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what am I doing? Hmm. Who knows? <laughs> 17. We were on 9 of uh, 17, 8. 17 8 on the Revelation. Okay, well. <laughs> let, me, let me check something here. I'm glad that air conditioner came on. I'm getting hot. Okay, I think the next scripture we want to go to is Revelation 22. And this will be our last scripture. <coughs> Let me look here. Verse 4. And we're still on the name for the disciples of Jesus. Still on the subject of the name that God divinely appointed at the church in Antioch yeah. in Acts chapter 11. Revelation 22, verse 4. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. 
So if it doesn't matter what we call God, it doesn't matter what name's written on our foreheads, right? Mm -hmm. You see? It has to apply. It has to be. If that proposition about the name of God and the name of Christians is true, it doesn't matter what name's in your forehead because it doesn't matter what you call God because he's still God. No. No, You see. It all matters. And you know what? There's a whole hassle of other scriptures yes. that would bear this out. But you know what? <clears throat> I've taken enough time today. I don't even know what time I got up here. <laughs> I don't know. It's all right. Anyway. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> it does matter. The name matters. God did not have Adam or any other man name him. He put his name in <coughs> his messenger, Jesus Christ. Amen. He divinely appointed the disciples of Christ, followers of Christ, learners of Christ, be called Christians. Nothing else. Amen. And it's the name of our Father that is written in our foreheads. Mm -hmm. In Revelation, everybody is said to have a name in their foreheads and on their right hands. It's either the name of the beast mm -hmm. or it's the name of the Father. Amen. And if it's the name of the Father, it's the name He has called Himself and not that we have called Him. Amen. You see, we can't be haphazard and sloppy about name calling. Yes. Yeah. Because it just won't work out. Mm 